recognized that something cataclysmic took place over 2,000 years ago. We thank you for that love. Thank you for Calvary this morning. And oh my God, thank you for the grave this morning. But I'm grateful that Jesus got up like he said he would. We bless your name on today, Lord. We ask now that we decrease, that you will increase in us. We thank you, Lord, for our online congregation and those who are streaming with us on this wonderful Lord's Day that has been designated as Easter Sunday, and in Christendom, we call it resurrection. I pray today, Lord, that somebody is saved. I pray today that somebody comes home and reclaim their rightful place. I pray for the backslider. I pray today, God, that there's healing in this word and that there's deliverance in this word because your word is your word by itself. It needs nothing added to it or anything taken away from it. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be accepted in thy sight, O Lord. You're my strength and you're my redeemer. Can you put your hands together and give the Lord a great praise? I know we've been praising him all morning, but you can keep on praising him just a little bit longer. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for men and brethren to dwell together in unity. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. You've been talking to your neighbor and testifying with your feet and clapping your hands and skipping and jumping and running. And how befitting it is, because if there's any other Sunday, if there's any other Sunday, this should be the one. As Bishop said, in every club, I ain't been to one, but in every club, there's a song that everybody get up on. And they get their groove in. I think I'm going to try to make a little sermon out of that right there. Because Bishop said something. I love my husband. Can we celebrate our bishop on this morning? Come on, clap your hands and celebrate our senior leader. I'm always excited when Bishop is happy. When he's happy, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. And Lord, let Resurrection be happy for Bishop today. And I'm just so happy that Resurrection is happy for Bishop today. And I'm happy because you is happy. <laughs> To our daughters on this morning, to Stephanie and uh, Stephanie and Shalana. I looked at Shalana and said, Stephanie, amen. But she's out, I'm sure, trying to get the boys settled. And we honor them and celebrate them. And I celebrate you and your families and everyone that's here, our sons and our daughters in the ministry. We celebrate you. Just, just nudge somebody and say, guess what? What we just had, we going back to it. Luke chapter number 24, 
I won't be long. Luke chapter 24, I won't be long. But we're going to give the Holy Ghost what the Holy Ghost wants. But I won't be long. Luke 24, <clears throat> verses 1 through 8. As you get it, somebody say, I have the word. If you're not there, say, I'm on my way. We're going to give you just a few more moments to get to where you're trying to get to in Luke 24. Luke 24, 1 through 8. Thus now begins the reading of God's word. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, these two men, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Verse 8, and they remembered his word. And they remembered, Elder Kenny, his words. I want you to repeat verse number eight with me. And they remembered his words. I want to use for a subject for this Resurrection Sunday, I'll never forget what he said and I'll never forget what he did. Just look at somebody and holler across the room and say, I'll never forget what he said. And I'll never forget what he did. That was the wrong neighbor. You need to find somebody else and say, hey, neighbor, I'll never forget what he said and what he did. Sit down, please. A hundred years ago, Ford suggested that humans have a mechanism that they can use to block unwanted memories out of consciousness. Neuroimaging studies have observed which brain systems or parts of the brain play a part in deliberate forgetting. And studies have shown that it is possible for people to deliberately block a memory or to deliberately block memories from consciousness. Sometimes when in this, in this neural imaging, it suggests that when one is traumatized, that that memory could do one of two things, or the trauma of the memory could do one of two things. It could either continue to be a mental issue that a person would have to deal with, or there is some medicines and with some therapy that you can get past it because the psychologist and all of the science helps you to understand what has happened in the systems of your brain to shut down some memories or a memory. And then neuroimaging says or suggests that there are some memories that we still have, but we've learned how to suppress them because of how it triggers certain emotions. But then there is another part of neuroimaging. That neuroimaging will suggest that I want to remember it. But the trauma has been so severe 
that I can't seem to get my brain cells to agree and to connect with what I need and want to remember. It's a bad thing when you can't remember certain things. It's a bad thing when you remember things that you don't want to remember. There are some traumas that have happened to all of us, but because of the blood of Jesus, and of course with some therapy, we have recognized what has happened to our memory banks that has suggested in our consciousness that there are some things that I just ought not to forget. There are some things that you shouldn't forget. You should never forget some of the principles that mama taught us. You should never forget some of the things that daddy put in our hearts, especially some girls who have had a father and have a father, so that we grow up in a man's world remembering what daddy said and what mama taught us. Daddy taught us, well, let me talk about me, but my daddy taught me to change the oil in my car and the tire. He said, but I don't want you to have to. Uh, he taught me where the oil stick was and why I need to keep a certain amount of oil in the car if I didn't want the engine to fall out. But he says, I don't want you to have to do that. But if you have to, this is how you raise the hood. This is how you jack up a car. Must just be me by myself. My daddy taught me not to just settle for any old Jojo. Find you somebody or let somebody find you that's going to love you, girl. Take care of him because he'll take care of you. I said, thank you, daddy. Mama taught me to be a little girl. She taught me the principles of femininity. And how to carry myself when I'm in a room with a, 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 a whole bunch of boys. She said, girl, you're going to go some places and be in some rooms, but you need to still be a lady. We cannot forget some of the principles of the doctrines and the tenets of our faith. Fasting and prayer still works. I'm just talking about not to forget some things. Fasting and praying still works. I said fasting and praying still works. You can put your jeans on. They can be tore up from the side and down the other side with both kneecaps out. I don't care. You can wear your hat natural. You can wear it nappy. But prayer and fasting still works. It's not about what's on the outside. It's about what's on the inside. So there's this thing about forgetting and the trauma that happens to us when we are in anticipation of something that has been said to us. I'm on my way to my text. When, when Jesus had told them in Galilee, he says, it is, it is right for me to be placed in the hands of sinful men to be crucified, but I'm not going to stay on the cross and I'm not going to stay in the grave but on the third day I shall rise again and so history denotes that uh, mm -hmm, according to Luke, Luke always presents Jesus as the risen Messiah the one who is to come the one who will save us from all of our sins, all mankind the one who bore 32 stripes on his back Luke introduces Jesus right from the jump that he is the Messiah and he will be the risen Savior and so it is customary my God I'm on my way out it is customary for the women for the women somebody shout the women the women it is customary for them to go down to the tomb mm -hmm, with their spices and their fragrances to bathe the body and it is customary for them to do it whether it was Jesus or anybody else but it is the Jewish custom but it was from Friday day at sundown until Saturday sundown that they were in great anticipation. Somebody said anticipation because they did remember but they forgot what caused them to forget. Lord have mercy. They, 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 you cannot tell me that they didn't remember it because they were in anticipation. They, they, they were expecting what Jesus had said, Elder Petaway. You cannot 
tell me that they weren't excited. They couldn't wait for the sun to crack the sky mm -hmm, on the, that Sabbath day, which is our Sunday. They, 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 they were in a hurry because the Bible said that they got up early in the morning. That's why we like to have sunrise service mm -hmm, to commemorate the early rising of the women. Now, I'm not going to argue with nobody, but I have asked questions. Where were the men and why weren't they in included but it's okay since they were his disciples and he chose them and took them off of the fishing seas I just had an argument and I still have one but I don't have time to argue with y'all today so 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 the women the women the women they are in great anticipation somebody ought to shout the church should be in great anticipation because just like Jesus got up from the grave, we are in a supernatural cataclysmic shifting, a divine resurrecting of the church of the living God that is coming out of COVID-19 that created a pandemic. I must be preaching to myself. Many of us lost some things. Many of us gave up some things. Many of us lost ourselves. We lost people, we lost loved ones, we lost jobs, but we are now in a supernatural shifting and a divine resurrecting of the church. And that's the reason why the Lord says, I've already fixed it and I'm going to have my way because the devil has had his way long enough. Somebody ought to shout, we are about to see something that God has already said. He said it, he said it. It. He said, and I came just to tell somebody, you can't forget what he said. Oh, that mercy. You can't forget what he said. I don't know when he told you what he told you, but you can't forget what he said. I don't know who was there when he told you, but you can't forget what he said. You can't forget what he said about your life. You can't forget about your destiny. You can't forget about what he said about the promise. You can't. Somebody say, I can't forget what he said. So, 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 it's early. It's early in the morning. Wanted to get out of this church. It's early in the morning. And so they, they do this because it is their ritual and a tradition as a sign of love. What we do in modern day, we take flowers to the graves of our loved ones mm -hmm, just out of love and respect on certain days, Mother's Day, Father's Day, mm -hmm, whatever day, it could be just because. But they do it out of tradition. The women... They were in, in their homes preparing to meet Jesus. And they get to the tomb. Now, I've been studying the tomb, Dr. Tevis, because the tomb doesn't look like our modern day grave Because there's no way in the world I will walk six feet under to go find the body of Haywood Parker. I love him, but I'm not going to ask no grave diggers to roll away the plaque off the ground. Let me go down here and see if there's any remnants of the man that have taken care of me. No, no, no. But, but I, I kept looking at this because tombs, Lord help me here, uh, in uh, 60 AD, tombs between 60 AD and 80 AD were hewn out of the mountain. Yes, Lord. They were cut. To precision, they 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 had they had to cut the stone so that it would be over the mouth of where the grave for the person to be in, and they had guards by the by by, by the stone so that so that that if Jesus was who he said he was, uh, that nobody would go in there and try to resume his body. Lord, help me here. Uh, I just want somebody to know uh, that there's been a stone that has been hewn out of the mountain. Uh, and that's when the songwriter says, uh, he's not only the lily of the valley, uh, he's not only the bright and morning star, uh, but he is a stone that's hewn out of the mountain. And when they got their bishop and they didn't see Jesus, the Bible said, 
said that they got a little confused. If I can use my own imagination, they were on their way with anticipation. But when they got there, anxiety took over. Have you ever been on your way in a good place and things are doing well and everything you've been praying for has looked like it's about to turn around in your favor? I got about two or three witnesses. All things are well and you get to where you're just about to get to and all of a sudden out of nowhere anxiety takes over you get nervous you start sweating you your palms get clammy and you, you, your face get all messed up because when you're on your way somewhere there is great anticipation for what has been promised or what you are expecting but then you get there and it doesn't look like what you saw before you got there Lord you need to tell somebody don't get anxious because while you don't see what you've been looking at it's someplace else but it is also there how how do you come up with that because is it possible as they were trying to find Jesus the Bible says that they stepped inside of the grave they went in the tomb, y'all. They, they went in there and uh, uh, they couldn't find Jesus. They couldn't, they couldn't find. Have you ever stepped inside of something uh, and you couldn't find Jesus and you couldn't feel Jesus and you know that you were saved and you know that you loved him and you know what he had done, but you still couldn't find that thing that told your Noah that it's going to be all right. I need you to tell somebody. Somebody, uh, even though he may not be where you think he is, uh, he's somewhere close by. The Bible, the Bible says uh, that the stone uh, had been rolled away. Now, uh, when they hewed the stone out of the mountain, uh, it takes a force to roll a stone away. Uh, and I'm getting ready to go to my seat. Uh, but is it possible? Uh, I said, is it possible? I started doing my research uh, because I too wanted to know how the stone got rolled away. I too was inquisitive since they called the grave diggers, diggers gardeners. I too wanted to know because one gardener could not have moved this ton of stone. But I believe, I believe I believe that because Jesus is the stone that is hewn out of the mountain, the stone took the stone and rolled the stone away. I want somebody to know. I'm just saying, possibly, because nothing bears out in, in commentary. When I looked and checked out what our German scholar Karl Barth had to say, he he sided with me. His theory was that since Jesus had been denoted in scripture as the stone hewn out of a rock, is it possible in his supernatural body that he had already rolled the stone away himself? I came this morning, this morning, just to tell somebody that the one that rose on a third day morning he knows how to roll every stone in your life away. Lift up your hands and open up your mouth. And shall I serve a God who knows how to roll the stone away in argued is this the law and the prophets that met Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration is this Moses and is this Elijah there are some that are still arguing whether or not again these two men had appeared one more time in the form of the God of angel in the form of an angel but in the likeness of man and they asked the women why do you seek the living among the dead there are some of us in this room this morning that are still trying to get life out of dead stuff that God said let that one die I got something better for you over here he wants you to stop resurrecting stuff that doesn't have life in it anymore but the Lord said there is a life that I can give you 
uh, that you've never had. Uh, I know Jojo been good to you, uh, but if you ain't married to him, uh, you need to come on out of the bed with him uh, and make him either marry you uh, so that you can live happily ever after. Uh, you don't need to settle for what Jojo does for you uh, because there is a fountain uh, that is filled with blood uh, drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Uh, I know this is modern day uh, and everybody is living with everybody uh, but I ask the Lord uh, that if he would keep breath in my body uh, I won't preach a compromising gospel uh, I preach the gospel uh, until somebody is saved uh, and I want you to know uh, that you're so much better uh, than what has traumatized your life uh, the women were traumatized uh, because they couldn't remember uh, at the same time they saw two men uh, we got two men standing here uh, I can't find Jesus uh, I don't know what to do uh, I was in anticipation uh, of looking for Jesus uh, and finding Jesus uh, but now I got two men uh, standing here asking me a question uh, and the Bible said uh, that they bow their face to the ground uh, every now and then uh, you have to discern uh, when it's time to give God worship uh, when you've been traumatized uh, somebody throw up your hands uh, and open up your mouth uh, and say I will uh, bless the Lord uh, at all times uh, it wasn't until then uh, that when they start to speak to the women uh, that they ask them the question uh, why do you seek the living uh, among the dead uh, now this is not the first time uh, this is not the first time uh, that we see two men in the scriptures uh, that's in shining apparel uh, Jesus takes Peter James and John uh, to the Mount of Transfiguration uh, and there appeared before him uh, mm -hmm, the law and the prophets uh, in the form of two men uh, somebody said before the cross uh, we had two men uh, but on his way to the cross uh, down the Via Della Rosa uh, somebody said the route of suffering uh, I believe some of us uh, have gone through some sufferings uh, over the last two years uh, I believe some of us uh, have had some issues uh, but the Lord said the cross uh, is not greater than my grace uh, anybody in here uh, needs some grace from the Lord uh, somebody said two men uh, and on his way to Golgotha uh, they hang two men uh, somebody said two men uh, I know where I'm at uh, he had two men uh, one on the right uh, and one on the left uh, but it was the one uh, that wasn't traumatized uh, by Jesus not taking himself down uh, he said when you uh, come into your kingdom uh, I just want you to remember me uh, touch 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 your neighbor uh, and say neighbor uh, he died and I want him to remember me touch the other neighbor and say neighbor he died and I want to remember what he said as he remember me I want to remember Jesus the Bible said oh the Bible said that while they were talking to these two angels of the Lord Lord have mercy that the Lord began to speak to them and said now I want you to remember what he told you in Galilee anybody in here got a word from the Lord he told you going down 64 anybody in here got a word from the Lord uh, that he told you riding down 95 uh, anybody in here uh, got a word from the Lord uh, that he told you you will be the head uh, and not the dead the, not the tail uh, anybody in here uh, got a word from the Lord uh, and he told you you shall be healed uh, and not die uh, well every now and then uh, life will happen uh, and things will go out of shape life will happen problems and situations will traumatize what God said to us the first time he said it anybody in here can remember the first word that the Lord spoke to 
to your spirit uh, and between that word uh, and this word uh, all hell has broke out uh, you found yourself uh, scratching your head uh, pulling your hair out uh, asking the hard questions uh, you find yourself uh, doubting what you heard God say uh, God surely couldn't have said that uh, because it hasn't happened yet uh, I've had more troubles uh, I've had more problems uh, maybe I'll just preach to myself uh, I've had more sickness uh, I've had more loss uh, I've had more difficulties uh, but what I believe uh, is that what God said uh, I can't forget uh, and what he did uh, I can't forget uh, the songwriter said uh, Jesus uh, I'll never forget uh, what you done for me uh, Jesus uh, I'll never forget uh, how you set me free uh, Jesus uh, I'll never forget uh, how you brought me out uh, Jesus uh, never uh, never forget uh, I just need about 20 people to open up your mouth uh, holler back at your girl uh, and say I forget say 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 oh Lord Lord have mercy the angels told them and this is my second close and I'm going to my seat the angel of the Lord told them he's not here now that's not good news Lord have mercy mm -hmm. he's not here there's a difference with him saying I'll rise again and then he's not there oh my 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 then he told them I shall arise again but they were looking for him when they got there I don't know if they were looking for Jesus to be standing up right or for him just to be walking around his grave but he said he has risen uh, that just simply says to me uh, that he got up uh, like he said he would. Uh, I said he got up uh, like he said he would. Uh, one more time, he got up uh, just like he said. Uh, and the angel of the Lord says, uh, remember uh, what he told you in Galilee. Uh, I got to go uh, with sinful men. Uh, crucified but on the third day I shall rise again slap your neighbor a five and say oh neighbor I want you to know something I'm living in my third day I'm living in my third day I know the devil said you'll never get up I know the devil said you'll never come out I know the devil said you'll never make it but I need you to holler at your girl and say, I'm living. Give me five preachers and shout, I'm living in my third day. For it's in my third day, I am healed. It's in my third day, I am delivered. It's in my third day, I am free. It's in my third day, he lifted me. Yes. Somebody ought to say, I'm in my third day. 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 It's a new season. He shifted my life. He shifted my mind. I'm living in the third day. It's the third day of troubles, but it's also a third day of triumph. I'm living in my third day. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. I'm living in my third day. How do you live in your third day? I live in his power that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. How, 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 how do you live with trouble in your third day? I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I'm living in my third day. What does the third day looks like? It looks like 
It looks like that when I was sick, now I'm healed. The devil wouldn't let me believe the report. But I hear Isaiah saying, whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, his report says I am healed. His report says I am free. His report says I'll rise. I'm going to rise again. I just want you to find somebody and tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, neighbor. The preacher lady got to go now. But I need you to know I'm about to get up. I'm about to get up. I'm about to get up. I've been down for the last two years. I've been shot out. I've been shot out. But now I'm about to get up. Yeah. Yeah. How do I get up? Just like God raised Jesus from the dead. The same power that God raised Jesus, the same power is about to raise us up. I just want you, Tabernacle, family and friends, just to know I can't forget what he said. And I can't forget what he did. Somebody asked me, well, what did he do? I'm glad you asked. He went down into the hell. Yeah, he did. He went down in hell. Snatched the keys to death out of the hands of the enemy. And said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? I got the keys in my hand. Anybody got any keys? Get your keys out and shake them like you're going to shake it in the devil's face. And say, ah, ah, I got the key. Show me some keys. Yeah, I got key. This is my key that unlocks closed doors. When man say you never come here. Man say you never be nothing. Man say you never make it. But I got a key that the Lord has given to unlock some closed doors. I got another key that when I am sick, all I got to do is turn it. And when I turn it, the Bible says there is a bomb in Gilead. There is a position there. I got another key in my hand that when I'm traumatized by life and the devil wants to take my mind, when I'm traumatized by loss and the devil wants to take my mind, I got another key. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. The truth of the matter is, Kena, I don't need all these keys. I don't need all these keys. I don't need all these keys. Y'all bring phones, y'all don't bring Bibles. I need, I don't need all these keys. All I need is this one key. This is the one key that I need. But he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. Such a name as I can't forget what he said. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. I can't forget what he did. What did he do? He kept a spear in his side for me. What did he do? 
He bore a crown of thrones on his head for me. What did he do? He bled, suffered in agony, in pain, in disappointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me, what did he do? Not only that, but they had nails in his feet, spikes in his hand. They said they stretched him wide. Ask me, what did he do? He stayed there. Somebody asked me, what did he do? He stayed there. He could have come down. He could have saved himself. He had the power to do it. But in his humanity, he saw me and you. In his humanity, he saw our tears. He saw our pain. He saw our disappointment. He saw all of our sickness. Ask me, what did he do? He stood there. Everybody's standing. I'm going. Oh, yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go. What did he do? What did he do? He stayed there. He stayed there from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. He stayed there and he took on everything that we've experienced. Hunt your neighbors and say, hey, hey, you ain't been through nothing for real. You've been through something, but you ain't been traumatized like Jesus was traumatized. Oh, y'all missed it. Jesus was traumatized in his humanity. Ask me when. When? He was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, if it be possible, let, 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 He saw Crohn's disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go a little further and pray one more time. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Ask me, what did he do? He stayed there and remembered the cup. So they still on their knees. They still, the angel is still telling them what Jesus said. Hold on just a minute. See, they just didn't tell him he had to be carried away with sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, he rose again. The angel, according to Josephus, they spent time in the conversation until the sun was rising. Which means it just wasn't two sentences that we read. The angel of the Lord must have had some inside information about Jesus' resurrection. Just lean on somebody and say, hey! I got some inside information that the devil don't know about. Closing on this. I'm, I'm closing on this because I feel a dance in my feet. I, I, I got some inside information that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Many of us have been crucified, but it wasn't the crucifixion of the cross, but it was a crucifixion. It was people talking and lying on us. It was people that didn't know us and anything about our character. So we've gone through some character mm -hmm, crucifixions. We've gone through some name calling crucifixions. But just tell somebody that day is over now. Because just as sure as I'm standing here, I 
came this morning to pray for those that have been traumatized, uh, that has been traumatized uh, and can't seem to find your rhythm again. Uh, just as sure as I'm standing here, uh, God told me to tell you uh, that if you take 30 seconds, uh, take 20 seconds, uh, take 5 seconds, uh, and if he did it before, he can do it again. I can't get no help in this building. I said if he did it before, he'll do it again. Just take five seconds and do a David with me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, stop right there. All that he's done. I need a praise right there. Somebody say, oh! That's all you got? What he's done, the fact that I'm still here. He wanted to steal your mind. shift you now. Somebody ought to shout, it's not about what he's done, but it's about where I'm going. Throw up your hands, open up your mouth, and shout, I'm about to move. I'm getting up out of the grave. All right. Come on, give me a praise right here. Give me everything you got. I never forget what he said, and I never forget what he did. Somebody say, I never forget what he said, and I never forget what he did. I want to pray, and we are closing. The shining men, these two men, even though it wasn't a part of my reading text, but it's a part of the text I read from. That there were another set of two men that were on the road. And they kept saying, we were hoping. And I just wanted to just insert this. Some of us have just been hoping for the pandemic to be over. Okay, maybe you haven't. Just hoping. I can one day really take my mask off. I mean, like really take it off. I keep them in the car, I keep them in the pocketbook, I keep them in the luggage, I keep them everywhere. Side of the door, I keep them everywhere. There is something that happens neurologically when we are traumatized according to the scientists as I was studying the other day. And they says that when it enters into your the membranes of your cells that creates the post, what they call PTSD, post-traumatic um, syndrome. That, and it's not just people that's been in military either, y'all. There's been some people right here in this church that ain't been in no military, but you are suffering with PTSD because you haven't been able to grapple and wrap yourself around the trauma that has taken place. And all I heard the Lord saying all this week, last week I was trying to prepare and hear the Lord. I was someplace preaching in New York and I was trying to prepare for this day. Forgot I had to preach in three hours in New York where I'm sitting and reading and writing. And I said, Lord, what is this about? He says, many have been traumatized. They've been anticipating the word that I've said to them and COVID-19 has in their mind made them hopeless because they don't think it's going to ever happen. And now that we're almost out of it, we're grappling with, oh, now what do I do? Everybody stand. I want to pray. It's your decision I just heard the Lord, that's all.
there's a lot of trauma that people are living with. And out of the trauma, they're making wrong decisions. Out of the trauma, because their mind is not normal. That's the best way I can say it. It's not, it doesn't have the capacity to make a sound decision because you haven't dealt with the trauma. You haven't even dealt with yourself in the trauma. You, you, and so you're making decisions about life that the Lord says, that's not what I want for you. But you can't hear it because the trauma can't, it, 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 emotionally, it, it, you can't get to it. I want to pray. The women were anticipating, but they were in anxiety. The two men on the Damas on the Emmaus Road, they were disciples in the community, but they weren't a part of any elitist group. Jesus never appointed them to anything, but they were there too. They remembered what he said because they said he said he was going to get up and. It's the third day. I want your hands raised in worship. They having a conversation with Jesus and don't know because they can't recognize because the trauma had them blinded that the man that's walking with him is no stranger. It's Jesus himself. And Jesus exegeting the text of the Old Testament prophets for seven miles, he's telling them what the Old Testament said about the Messiah. The Messiah is preaching about the Messiah. <laughs> but they kept saying, well, we don't know what happened. Our little grandson, when things don't go right, he said, what happened? What happened, Gigi? Granddaddy, what happened? There are times when we've asked, what happened? When you come to yourself, I'm ministering to somebody in this room. Only believe. With your hands raised, nobody's looking at nobody. You can meet me at this altar if you choose. But there's a lot of trauma in this room. And many times we want to Come on, saints. Jesus, for this one, Lord, for this one. We pray her deliverance right now. We pray her deliverance right now. Come on, elders, I need y'all to move a little quicker. We pray her deliverance right now. Somebody, yes, Bishop is going to get there with somebody else. It's more than just her. There's some of you. That don't, don't, don't stay back there and wait for another something else. I need you worshiping right here. I need you worshiping right here. Kiva, it's going to get better. It's going to get better, baby girl. You haven't even told mom and dad what you've been going through because you didn't want them to worry about you. My Satarabo. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo, yeah, Satarakoya. You haven't told nobody what you've experienced. But I pray now for your breakthrough. I pray for the power of deliverance. I pray for the power of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Woo! I pray for your deliverance right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. You're coming out of it. You're going to get your mind back. You're going to get it all back, baby. You know what I'm saying? He can't take control. He has no control over you. 
He has no power over you. I need a praising and a praying church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I need my intercessors. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Elder Kenny, I need you to come and pray for this brother, Brother Dexter. I'm not just going to pray, but y'all been equipped to pray. Father, power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, ha, that, there it is. Oh, Masha. Let it all go, Kiva. Let it all go. Oh. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Robo Shataroya. Rekoshuba Hande. Rokoshiba Hasoto. Rokoshiba Hasoto Maya. How? Hey, ho, ho, ho. By the power of God.
free trauma, set free. Deliver trauma, deliver trauma. In the name of Jesus. Ooh. Be healed, be healed. Be healed, be healed. Be healed, be healed. Be delivered, be delivered. Be delivered, be delivered. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Be delivered, be delivered. Be delivered, be delivered. Every generational curse, every generational curse, every generational curse, be broken right now in the name of Jesus. See it all. 
Conversations with God. And the Lord says He's not left you. You have a good heart. You have a good heart. You said, if I could only know him better. If I could only pray like the others pray. He says, but he's heard your simple prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody worship the Lord in here? still here, let them stay where they are. Don't let nobody disturb them. God is doing some things. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all. wants me to look but your ministry may not be beyond behind these four walls he says that they gravitate to what they it's like you are a magnet to young people and you said well what do I have to give them you give them your story you give them your story so that you save them from the streets you save them from the jail 
you saved them from drugs. You saved them from sexual promiscuity because you've been there. You've been abused and the abuse traumatized you. But the Lord says he's going to use it for his glory. I don't know you, but Jesus knows you. It doesn't matter if you take them to the YMCA or some building downtown. I don't know. There's a building somewhere where they, where y'all gather. And it's not often, but you gather. You're just to y'all say y'all chill you just gather and you talk about whatever they want to talk about that's ministry sweet baby that's ministry God is going to use you to get these young girls and boys off the streets there's something in your heart you said I don't even know how to do it but I want them to have a place to live I want them to oh my god I don't mind feeding them, but all I can give them is McDonald's or Hardee's. And because of the way you look, people, church people said, no, we can't use her, no. She don't have the look. Let me tell y'all something. God got folk that don't look like church people that he's going to use. I need the church to get ready. You're an answer to my prayer. I told the Lord to send them. Tattoos everywhere. I don't care. There's ministry in you. I need your name and your information. Because God's getting ready to use you, baby girl. You said nobody helped you. Nobody. You said nobody really reached out to help me. I'm going to help you. Because there are too many young people that's on the streets. Don't you worry about bringing them in here yet. Let's just get Jesus in them. Church, can we get Jesus? Just touch my hand, baby girl. Many resources will come to help. I don't know what relationship this is, but it don't matter to me. But many resources will come to help that will open up some doors that will fund that will fund this vision for small, young people, young adolescent teens, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, up to about 17. You all gonna help. I'm gonna help you so you can help me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because our church is vibrant with youth, young people, children. It don't matter what they're coming off the streets. We came off the streets. We just dressed up now. But many of us were drug, fiend, drug fiends and alcoholics. And some in here now still got some problems, but it's okay. I want you to hear what I'm saying. That the Lord will use you to do ministry as you give your life to him. Somebody make sure I get this lady's name and number because I'm going to call you this week. All right? All the glory. The glory. All the glory. Yes, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we worship you. Our Lord. You are for the healing power in the joints, in the muscle, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take the swelling, take the inflammation, this injury that wants to disable him even in his spine, 
It is not, the origin of it is not in the leg, it's, it's in the spine. But the leg is the manifestation of what's happening in the spine. I pray now in the name of Jesus that the oil of God would drip on this man. In Jesus' name. We decree and declare healing. He's going to walk normal. I said we, he's going to walk normal. I need some praise in this house. He's going to walk normal. He's going to walk normal. In the name of Jesus. I believe God. I believe God. We're all standing. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We give. We everybody but I wish it were just for 30 minutes this week at 6 o'clock a.m. in the morning starting in the morning over the next seven days the Lord spoke to me while I was in New York Elder Tion, and he says the month of May will be the month of miracles Elder Kenny I sat there and I said well Lord what does that look like he said it looks like miracles the month of May will be the month of miracles. And that's all the Lord said to me. I was finishing my assignment and headed to my next assignment. Dr. Shaw, I was sitting on the plane trying to take a nap. And the Lord spoke to me again and he says, if you hear me, I'll give you the exact time to go in so that they will come with anticipation for the miracle that is needed. I didn't know what any of that meant. I just wrote it down, put it in my journal, closed my Bible. And this morning when I was praying, the Lord reminded me the month of May will be the month of miracles. And when Bishop stood up and said, the Lord, Y'all start saying, have your way, and that it is fixed. That was the confirmation that I got in the spirit, because I was, I didn't know. I said, the month of May is going to be here, and I don't know what to tell the people, Lord. Next week, starting Monday at 6 a.m., I'm going to be praying from 6 a.m. to 6.30, from Monday until this time, Sunday, for the next seven days. And I'm praying so that if you want to know what to pray for, I'm praying for miracles in the month of May. We are seeing the hand of God shift this church. Deliverances have taken place. What he said we are to be, we are becoming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all can sense it and experience it. But it's here. We're in it now. We're in it. We're in it. We're in it. Mother Barnes, we're in it. You've been saying, what is it? What is it? What is it? We are in it. The shift is here. We're in it. He said, and then I'm going to show you again because some of you still don't believe that the month of May will be the month of miracles. You're going to hear testimonies in the month of May. Listen, last thing, very quickly. I just want you to get a $30 seed. 
you know, don't if you tear your face up, that's not you. Just get a thirty dollar seat. Get your device. Get your phone. Get whatever. Get your thirty dollar seat. Thank you, Tevis. Get a thirty dollar seat. Cause I know y'all gotta go get your babies, and the children are probably ready to see their mamas. Get a thirty dollar seat. This seed is a seed that's going to be sown for the month of May, the month of miracles. The month of miracles. The month of May is going to be the month of miracles. What was witness? Jesus' resurrection is a miracle to many people. Never has a man gotten up out of the grave. But because he wasn't just all man, he was all God. I'm just giving y'all time to stand back up. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. If you wanted to bring it and lay it on the altar, you can. Ways to give is going to be put on the screen. I see you digging for it. Everybody stand. My new mothers that's over here. These are my new mothers. Y'all stand. He's the new mother. Terry done bent all the way over. These the new mothers of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get your seed offering. Get your seed. And now, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the seed that is being sown. If you want to just come and tap the altar while I'm praying. Thank you for the seed that's being sown. I believe what you said to me, Lord, while I was in New York. I believe that May would be the month of miracles. We're going to see families coming back together again. Lord, I believe that you're making wrong right. I believe, Lord, that you're going to complete the healing, holistic healing, that we will be whole ever with our mind, body, and spirit. We are going to be made whole, totally. We are in process for some. And then some, they were healed immediately. And some, you say, they were healed as they went. I thank you for the month of May being the month of miracles. And God, we just bless you. Can we all stand for our benediction? Hallelujah. 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 Okay, so since you got it up there, we'll be online. The six o'clock prayer. Amen. Six o'clock prayer. Yeah, take a picture with your phone. If you, you ain't got no pencil and paper. Go to your phone app. Click on thing, camera. Take a picture. At six o'clock. Meet me in the morning from 6 to 6.30 for the next seven days. Bishop, did you want to close? Praise the Lord. We're all standing and ready to go. What a beautiful day we've had. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Always remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Now, Father, I thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. And as we go and continue to celebrate around the table, fellowshipping and loving on one another, let us not to forget you what you've done for us let us not forget what you said and what you did these things we pray and we believe in Jesus name in Jesus name I'll see you in the morning Jesus